right, let's do this. So I'm super fired up and excited to welcome one of my uh, friends, actually, George, this really cool person that, I, that I've gotten to know in Mexico with eXp, and I've been working with you and your dad on the coaching side, and I've been really impressed with your social media game so much so that I was like, hey, would you be willing to do this and, and share? And, and you were so gracious to do that. Thank you. I know this is uh, pulling you slightly out of your comfort zone, but I know the value is going to be so worth it for the audience today. So Georgia, maybe tell us a little bit about yourself. How long have you been in real estate? Um, and then we can kind of kick this off. Um, okay. So I got into real estate. I think I was doing my real estate exams in high school <laughs> when I was taking other exams. My dad got me in really young. Um, he needed a partner pretty quickly. And um, when I got in, we were doing mostly farms and farms were just kind of the way was the big thing for us. And um, I always felt real estate wasn't for me. And I got into different avenues. I was, I flipped houses and then I got my brokers and I thought, okay, open a brokerage. And then I realized that's way too much work. Um, and then I just, uh, it just went on and on. But um, I'm finally, um, over the years, I kind of fine tuned what we kind of wanted to look like and we brought in our, our area instead of just being specializing in farms now we kind of specialize in everything and um, i kind of had to let go of my dad's coattails there and kind of brand out on my own because we both kind of have different directions so but we worked together too so it was really good so that's kind of where we kind of went different um different ways and and we got onto all different platforms and created a, a really a great way to get out to people and really good exposure for our team. Awesome. One of the things that I really love about working with you and your dad is you guys are come off very humble. And I think that's a really great quality. So I know you're not the type of person that's going to brag, but I mean, your, your numbers consistently, it seems like year over year, you guys are doing 40, 50 deals. Uh, so you know, like we're talking like some serious production. Uh, so, and, and Georgia, can you share with everybody? How much money are you spending on marketing? Because I was blown away when I found this number out. Like, how much do you spend on marketing? Like zero. I don't like. I don't spend any money on marketing unless I'm making new signs or um, putting up some billboards. But like, I, I have like one right now. <laughs> so okay. So how does somebody sell 40, 50 homes a year? You just it's like literally you and your dad's kind of helping you part time doing it still, right? Like it's but you're yeah, doing a lot of it yourself. Time. You're both full time. So you're doing it um, and you're selling that many homes and you're not spending hardly any money on marketing. How the heck have you built up your mind share? Please, like, let's turn on the tabs. Let's roll with this now. What are you doing to get that kind of business without spending money? Okay, so bear with me, guys. I kind of, I'm better from reading from what I kind of wrote down because I forget things and I miss things. So I may not look at the camera as much as I want to, but I'm just kind of going to give you guys what, I kind of did. So if you want to implement anything into your own business, feel free to. So one of the first things in real estate we are told to do to become successful is to build your sphere of influence, right? Like that's like 101. I remember Richard Robbins like books and Tony, Tom Ferry, whatever, <laughs> all the courses we used to have to go to. That's like what the first thing you had to do. So you have to talk with your friends and your family and build it out off that. Well, in most cases, Facebook is where we all connect the most actually, um, my entire sphere. So my Facebook started with friends and family, cousins and aunts, and it grew and grew as I met new people. The very first thing I did to start to build my social uh, network for real estate specifically was to add people. Um, and if I knew them in any which way at all, I added them. And I, when I first started out, I started picking up with successful real estate agents. So agents that were really big in my area, I would add them because I wanted to mirror what they were kind of doing because I needed to, to figure out how I wanted to build up my name. Um, if they were home inspectors, I added them, lawyers, mortgage brokers, and so on. So starting with my whole spirit and then building out. Eventually, I would have about 20 plus requests a day from other people wanting to be my friend uh, because Facebook kind of has a thing in there that um, it gives you friend suggestions if you have enough connections. So, I mean, if I had someone down the street, Miss Blanche wanted to be my friend, um, I would, I, even though we've never met, I would say, hell yeah, let's be friends. And then next thing you know, her quirky sister Gladys wants to be my friend. And I would go, sure. And even, even after all the time, my Facebook, my Facebook page would be filled with like cat memes and our cat videos and memes because I'm following all of them. The really great thing is that my Facebook was filled with 
um, their Facebook, sorry, I'm getting distracted because now I'm like dogs trying to get in here. Okay, I'm just like off my ball right now. You're okay. doing great, you're doing awesome. It's going, it's perfect. So um, um, you're talking about you're adding yes. different people. So, I'm, I'm adding all these people. I'm adding um, anyone that really wants to be my friend that we have a connection with. And, you know, my Facebook wasn't full of all the people that I really wanted because I'm seeing all these different posts from people I didn't really know, but I didn't care because I was building this for my business. And um, like I was saying, even though my, uh, like my feed, what I was putting out there was crossing all of their feeds three to four times a day. So the best part about this was I was conquering my spheres, mind share every single day versus whatever came across mine. On average. So, George, can I stop you there? So how much were you posting? Me on average. So three to four times a week, I was posting whatever I thought I could. And so they would see my name come up and they would start to get familiar with me and recognize how I work and what do I do. On average, Facebook users visit their platform 38, 38 minutes a day. So let's just gear that up to 40 minutes a day. And I can make just, if I can make just one impression for one second on their screen time, I'm already winning. I know some of you are thinking Facebook is getting old and there's new platforms that are taking over. And I mean, I'll be the first to say that I'm actually gearing myself more towards Instagram and TikTok, but you have to never underestimate the power of Facebook. Facebook is the biggest of all social media networks so far, I mean, by far. Um, and it's based the biggest on just about every single measure. And it's constantly evolving. It's, and it's incredible for all different types of audiences to tap into. For instance, seniors are the fastest growing group of people on Facebook in 2020. That is a huge market. We, you want to stay relevant. And I mean, everyone knows seniors are always downsizing, right? Here's a senior. Here's a senior. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and they never hesitate to like or share anything I post. One of, the po like, one of my last posts I just did on Facebook, uh, it got shared 53 times. I mean, that's free sharing 53 times off one post. I mean, and, and you think about that, that's 53 times my post was on 53 different spheres of influences and like influence, um, sphere of um, yeah. influence. Yeah. yeah sorry. Yeah, and, um, and that's 53 different impressions. Well, actually way more than 53 impressions. That's hundreds. Um, I have, uh, so not only is that great exposure because I do brand myself in my post, um, I had like, so once say I list a property, instead of just posting that to Facebook and saying, Hey, check out my new listing in, in Delaware, I'll have my face right on there. So when people share it, I'm going along with the 53 times and not just my name at the bottom saying, mm -hmm. this is listed by George Tush. And a really good way to do that. And it's very simple is you can crop your face onto any of your own listings just with using Canva with, I think Jason's you're familiar with, but um, it's very, very simple. So you don't have to pay someone to make you a really flashy, professional looking post every time you want to do that. Um, but how good is that too when I, have, when I have to go to a listing appointment and use that in my marketing? So when they ask, <laughs> we all get the same question, what are you going to do about marketing? I mean, when you can really break these numbers down for some of your sellers, um, you can really compete against a lot of people in your market because they know the power of Facebook and how many times you get shared. So Facebook is amazing for reaching people through posts, but my favorite tool within Facebook is Facebook stories. I don't know if everyone should probably be familiar with them, but they're at the top there. Um, 300 million people use Facebook stories daily, and that's far less than the 500 million who use Instagram stories daily, but it's still massive. And the best part is I can make a story on Instagram and share it to Facebook, vice versa. So I'm hitting now two giant platforms at once with the same content. So let's talk about Facebook stories for a quick, a quick second. Video posts generate 135% a greater organic reach compared to photos. And if you add text to those videos or photos, I mean, just to the videos, you can add another 12% of reach those will get. So I do a lot of, um, it's very simple to add text in when, um, so not only do I post a listing on my Facebook, I'll actually post it in my story and I'll add text to it. So, because you never know, some people don't really watch their walls anymore, they just do stories. So just make sure, and then if they do watch both, you're hitting them twice, that's two more impressions. So that's some really great exposure. Just the little tiniest thing you can do. Um, I can't stress how important it is enough to get in front of the camera. Um, and trust me, it's not comfortable for anyone. 
and it definitely wasn't for me. And I'm actually going to go off my script, just a quick story I thought about. Um, a couple of years ago when I decided I really wanted to make my Instagram jump a lot more, I, this girl I had known like 10 years ago, I saw her on Instagram and she had like 10,000 followers. Now she has like 50 or something. Her name is Kayla Logan. And so I thought to reach out to her and take her to lunch and ask her like, what did you do different? Like, how are you getting these people? And um, she was just bluntly said to me, she goes, you need to get in front of the camera. You do not care what you look like, if your hair is perfect or anything, and you just need to let your guard down and just do it. So um, I know it was like the hardest thing to do, what is to do that. Um, but the more you do it, the better you get, the better you get at it. And um, I think I wrote, <laughs> like, I struggled for years to do video. Like it wasn't like I just grabbed it and was great at it. And like, I would post it then I'd delete it. Then I'd post it and I'd throw my phone. Then I could get my phone back and then I'd still delete it. Like it wasn't until I started to follow people that I really looked up to, like big real estate names that were across the States that I really thought were fantastic. I would look them up and watch what they do. I would mirror what they do. And I thought, okay, well, you know, if they can do it, I can do it too. So find people that inspire you in real estate where you want to take your real estate game. I mean, they don't have to be in your area at all. They could be uh, I could think it could be out in BC for, <laughs> or out in Ontario. And um, you just got to start small. So that's what I did. I started small. I jumped on my phone, switched the camera to, to view my face. And I decided to give my audience a quick video about closing costs. I thought, okay, I, no one really knows closing costs when like they don't do real estate a lot or they always do want to know more about it. So um, I did a little video about closing costs and what to expect when you close your first home. And I feared I'd be made fun of. I feared um, people would judge me or I would be corrected. I'd say the wrong thing. But to my amazement, people loved it and they'd send me private messages and thumbs up and to keep going. And um, these kinds of videos were really helping and people really, like, I couldn't believe the response. And that just, those small reinforcements helped me get me more comfortable in front of the camera. And eventually I was able to read my audience a bit better too and kind of see what people want. So I do a video, say, um, I can't think of something on the spot, but just, and then, you know, I wouldn't get very much interaction from them, not too many views, not too many replays. And then I would do one on a really big question. I would just sit there and answer some questions or tell people my experience that day. And people would love that because, you know, a lot of people don't know as much as we think too um, about the real estate game because we kind of hear it all the time. We're so used to it. We forget about the little things. Here's a question um, for you. Can I ask you a question? Do you mind? Yeah. Yeah. And this is, and this is great. I'm, uh, I'm loving this. So one of the things that I found with, with video, some of the best performing videos are sometimes the ones that don't even get watched as much as you think, or they actually, there's not as much engagement, but I found it early when I used video to kind of build our mind share and our branding and everything else that we were doing was just the consistency of doing it. Yeah. And man, I can't tell you how many times I've had a listing here or an opportunity here that came out of the woodwork because somebody just said, Hey, I've been watching your videos for mm -hmm. a year, six months, and they've never commented, said anything. It's yeah. just like thousands of people just sitting there creeping behind, behind their computer and not saying anything. And I didn't realize how many people actually do watch some of that. And they may just watch a little bit here, a little bit there. Yeah. but they're seeing it and it's like that whole mind share piece. Maybe share a little bit about your thoughts on that. Cause what, I'm hearing what you're saying. I'm thinking, yeah, like I get that. Yeah. Like the consistency is key. Like you have to, I mean, once you really set out to do it, I mean, you do fall off the bandwagon and some weeks I just don't feel like getting in front of the camera. Um, and for me, I'm like, I didn't just set out and decide to do like, like just opportunities come across and you think, okay, like once you have decided that you're going to start doing that, opportunities kind of come up and they're like, okay, this would actually make a really great video of uh, digging out a septic tank for your clients. <laughs> like, you know, and things that you weren't, if you weren't mind, like your mind wasn't set up that you wanted to do this and have this goal, you would really miss out on that. And then, um, but, but the things that you kind of miss, uh, sorry. <laughs> um, but the exposure though, you wouldn't believe the amount of people that I have no idea are watching me and I'll go out with my friends uh, to the bars or something. And there's people that have come up and they're actually like crazy fans of mine. And I'm just like blowing away. I'm like, what is happening? And, uh, or anywhere I go, people end up knowing what I'm doing. So, and they ask me about real estate. So, I mean, you don't even have to start the conversation about real estate. People would just want to talk to you about it. So. Um, Georgia, do you mind if I ask another question? So 
what I find with video is people build an affinity and like almost like a rapport and a trust with you from watching the videos. It's like, it's like almost like they know you. And I don't know if you found this, but for me, my first year in the business, before I was established, I worked really, really, really hard to get the listings that I had. Like I had to really grind it out. Um, but by year two and three, after consistently putting content out there, it became easier. It almost felt like when I walked in the door, I already was, uh, I had a huge leg up. They already felt like they knew me. Can you share maybe your experience yeah. from that? Yeah. I mean, I get people all the time, um, just because yeah, they, they've been watching me for years, just like you said, and they kind of already know how I work. They want their properties pumped out the way I do it. They want the exposure and, um, they ask you about your dog. They ask you about everything <laughs> in your life because you. Yeah, share. it's kind of crazy. They actually know everything about me. I mean, it's all it's all what you're willing to share too. So, um, yeah, a lot of conversations start up because they're like, "Oh, I saw you got a new dog," and then yeah. they're like, "I'm looking to buy a house." I'm like, "Yeah, okay." <laughs> like, so and it's it's all you have to be comfortable with what you're sharing too. So I'm a very um, I'm not a very private person. I don't really have much to be private about. Um, but I'm still wouldn't share a lot of things. And, and it's funny, once you start sharing, you realize there's a lot more you have to share in different avenues of what you do in a day. And I think I, I touch into that a little bit because um, I like how I'm selling a life as a, I'm selling kind of my lifestyle because I love what I do versus all I post is listings and sales. I show people that I really love what I do. And that comes across because it shows that I'm passionate and that they want someone that's going to be use, working with them. Like that's their full-time thing. So I don't know if I answered that question. <laughs> no, that does. That does. I mean, it's like you are, you're being yourself. I mean, okay. So here's the thing. I get a lot of people that always say like, oh, I don't look right. Or I don't, you know, like I'm worried I said the wrong thing. And they're trying to like almost script the content they're putting out there. How important is scripted content versus actual, just genuine, authentic, like content, like share that. Yeah, I mean, everyone really thoroughly enjoys, um, you, everyone being authentic and original in their, in their posts. And it's a lot easier to do that when you can have a snippet with your phone and you can be like, okay, I didn't like the look of that one. It's not like you're going live. I don't do a lot of lives. I mean, I think I could get more into it eventually. I mean, that's just something that, um, I don't even think I'm as comfortable enough to jump on the phone and do lives yet. Like I like just having, a, I like to know what I'm putting out there. I can edit it. I can add text and I can make it something I really, I'm really proud to put out. But I mean, there's times where I'll just jump on there and I'm, I'm showing a property and I'm just wanting to show off guys. I mean, this really cool property, like the century house, you got to see this want this basement. <laughs> it's like, hey, George, what's that? We got a question. Do you mind? Oh Yeah. The question is, sorry, how are you cropping your face on the posts? Please expand on that. Okay, so if you know my posts, you'll see, I don't know, it's not cropped very well. Like there is still little white things. And I think I just went to like a free cropping tool on the internet. And it's like this little eraser and you kind of just like edge it out. So I would probably just have like a marketing guy do a nice job of it, which has been on my list to do because I only post it on lighter posts because on dark, you can see the white marks. <laughs> so you can easily just get someone you know to do it. Or if you, if you have time right now, which everyone does is, um, look up on Google, how to crop your face out of a picture and you should be able to figure it out to get you by for now. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. And, and, and you mentioned a couple of programs, you mentioned Canva being one of them. Yeah. I use Canva on my phone and on the computer all the time and it's free. There's some templates you can pay more for it or you could do the pro version. And I think it actually has a cutout tool on there now. I don't think it used to, but it does now. Um, so if you get really familiar with Canva, I do everything in there because I mean the price point and everything, and you can really do any kind of post you want. You could do 10 name, 10, 10 things that you want to do to fix a house up before it sells. You know, like you can, it's just not just, um, cropping in and stuff like that. So, okay. Awesome. okay. I love um, it. This is so good. I'm, I'm like, there's <laughs> a lot of engagement and I know we haven't even hit everything. So let's, let's keep going. This is awesome. I'm not sure where I'm at, but I'll figure this out. Okay. Well, we talked about Facebook. You talked a little bit about like, um, Instagram. So where do you want to go okay. next? So what did you do? Okay. So that would turn me into doing videos and talk and about topics that people were wondering about like say what do real estate ag agents even do why use a real estate agent why use a real estate agent or sorry um when to use a real estate agent or even better why use a real estate agent over selling a house yourself like these i'm just giving examples of topics you can jump on there for five minutes and just explain to people these simple simple questions 
And honestly, once you start asking yourself the easiest questions, the topics are endless and people really start to listen and watch. And, and, and it's just consistency that you don't have to get on there and rant for an hour about um, why you shouldn't, why you, why you should use a real estate agent over a for sale by owner. Um, but you just gotta get on there, try for three times a week, try to get it up. I mean, if you can do every day for a couple minutes, I mean, that's really gonna excel you. But if you can just get comfortable with the camera, that's the main thing. Um, most people think real estate agents just print money. I mean, and we do whatever we want. I mean, that's just kind of our reputation when everyone, anyone says real estate agent around here. So I feel like it's your job to show your value and we are constantly having to prove this in listing appointments and everything, but we are in the, we are in the business of attracting and what's more attracting than anything is showing people we love what we do and showing off how others love working with us too. So I really show how much I love, um, of, I love posting my new listings and how much I love going through the houses. And when I sell a house, I love having my, my clients there and they're so excited and they comment and they share and they bring, and they, and they're pushing my, my branded stuff out on their, their contents on their, on their spheres of influence. So it just, it's just a win-win all the way through. Um, I never want to come off as just sell, sell, sell. I want to be seen in a position of strength and strength comes in different shapes and sizes for everyone. Like my strengths to that I'm confident, I'm caring and I'm honest. That's what I really want to portray. And I can really show this and that side of me through all different platforms on social media because I can control what they see of me. You know, like how powerful is that? That I want to come off a certain way, I could show myself off that certain way. And um, I'm, so, but, sorry, and because everyone has preconceived notions of real estate agents already in their head. So if they just see you as a real estate agent you know, that's what I'm saying. People already think a certain way about us sometimes. Just, it's just the way it is. So if you can show your own value and show people really the way you actually are, I mean, that goes a long way and definitely to a lot of eyes and a lot of ears across all these platforms. And um, let me just keep going. <laughs> that's great. Keep going. I love it. Um, when I'm on social media giving, like, when, I, when I'm on social media giving free advice, I, I'm not saying things like, buy with me or sell with me. I try to be relatable and teach buyers and sellers what to expect when buying and how to get your home ready for selling. Really helpful tips and tricks to help them build their confidence when they're ready to enter the real estate market, right? I try to speak freely from my heart and I don't expect anything back. And this reminds me of your favorite book, Jason, The Go-Giver, when you suggested I read that. Um, you can give and give and give and don't expect anything in return and you wouldn't believe what comes back your way. So what started, on, what started out on my Facebook as trying to build a sphere of influence ended up with people comfortably coming up to me um, as, and coming up to me and they can message me or call me about any real estate questions they need because I've been there um, helping them along the way, me knowingly or not. Like I just, they feel comfortable enough about that. And the best part is I'm not someone that when they do message me, on Instagram or anywhere, you know, I'm not on the spot. So I receive a message and I can take as much time as I want to respond. Meaning I can take the time to write the perfect answer and pretty much come off as a real estate guru or someone that knows what the hell she's talking about. So, I mean, a lot of people ask a lot of hard questions too. And it's like, you gotta look them up sometimes if it comes to lawyers or things like that. So I really like that side of it. Can I, can I say something on that? Just yeah. to evaluate what you're saying. Um, I think it's really important that you come off in what you're doing approachable, you know, mm -hmm. like the, the stereotypical three piece suit realtor that has the fancy car and like, seems like they're egotistical. That's not social media guys. Just so you understand, like when, when George is talking about what she's doing, it's not about that. When I talk about what I was doing, it's not about that. It's about building affinity and trust with your audience by allowing them to see who you really are. Yeah. And you can show different sides of you. You can show your fun side. You can show your professional side. But you have to build a rapport with your audience. And you can't be somebody that people feel is unapproachable. And, and for me, that was always like, I was like the opposite. I'm like, I'm not going to be that perfect three-piece suit guy that nobody wants to talk to because they feel like, you know, I'm too busy for them. I wanted to be relatable, professional, have high standards, but be comfortable and also to, you know, show different sides of myself. So what's your take on that? I mean, I kind of I poke fun on it sometimes. Like I just did a post of me in an all pink uh, dress with all pink jacket with all pink purse saying, um, 
I, I'm, what did I put? I put on there something like not your typical realtor, but I mean, I was, I come off kind of as a playful fun, I think, but down to the point when it wants to be. So, you know, there's, there's the high end realtors that are going to be in these super high markets, like these Toronto, like million dollar listings. So um, there's no perfect way of doing real estate. It's, it's how you ever want to come off. I like to come off a little bit more professional edgy, but I think I show uh, probably not that a lot in my post so i'm agreeing with you i'm just saying there's no right way how you want to come off sure um, yeah i mean if you're if you're trying to be like the million dollar agent on tv and you're yeah. going after that luxury and it's all about image and everything else i can understand you focusing that me being working on a you know maybe a blue collar mix of white collar blue collar but being on vancouver island um you know people don't generally dress in three-piece suits in their everyday no. lives so yeah. that wouldn't work quite the same here so i think you have to understand the market that you work in but I do mm -hmm. think it's important to be able to show authenticity at the same time. So. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, so let me, okay. So, so we're just, I know we're still just talking about Facebook right now and I haven't even tapped into Facebook pages or Facebook groups, but I just want to touch on them quickly before I jump, jump to Instagram here. Um, I do not have a huge following, um, but that is okay with Facebook, um, with my Facebook business page. Uh, because you don't really need a massive following. I mean, I'm proof in the pudding that you don't need a massive following to, to really um, harvest what you're kind of doing here with what you're trying to put out there. Um, you just need people to build, you just, need to, you just need to build trust with the people that are around you. And you want to, you want to come off as the first person, the first name they pass along. I'm not sure if I'm saying that right, but you want to be the first person. Well, they sure. think, yeah. The first person they think of to pass your name along. So say someone is looking to sell their home and ask a friend if they know a real estate agent. And even if that person has never met you, they could still put your face to your name and, re and recommend you. They can then look me up and become more familiar with me through my platforms, which makes me more approachable and creates no pressure atmosphere, like exactly what we were just talking about. So I'm already like pretty much pre-interviewed before they even meet me because they can see everything I've done up to this point. And, um, and they already, I'm already getting recommendations for people that haven't even met me because they've been watching me from the sidelines. So, um, I don't know where else you can get that from. <laughs> Quick so question that, from the audience here. Uh, yeah. to, sorry, I know I, but just, I just want to ask it. So do you work your Facebook page with personal content? Um, so do you work your Facebook page, sorry, do you work your Facebook page with personal content or just business only? No, I do. I, I cut off there what you were saying. I, I guess I could read it. I have my thing here. But um, my Facebook, okay, it's funny. I kind of get into this. I, I, I say I could be a little bit more silly on Instagram. But Facebook, it's kind of funny. Like, you kind of know your audience once you start going. And I do post most of my things together. Like, I will post on here. But there's definitely some things I will keep on Instagram. Um, but no, I do personal and business. I, I've always mixed the both. And um, just because I like to show the, per the real estate lifestyle um, and, and your business page is where you can really, if you want to have just a strict business approach, that's where you can have a business page just kind of geared towards that and then have your personal as your personal. Every real estate agent does it differently because I didn't run with the Facebook business page off the hop, which I should have probably done because I kind of touch into it in a little bit because Facebook, um, you're only allowed 5,000 friends on your personal page. And like you hit that, you're done. You're maxed. Well, you can delete and, and, and fine tune it. But on your Facebook business page, you can, you can have as many likes as you want. So, I mean, I'm not going to, I'm actually very close to that 5,000 friend mark. And I'm actually going through and like, and deleting some people that I probably, I, I don't even know them whatsoever. They don't even live in this country. But, um, you know, it can really take your Facebook um, to another to another level when you're on the business page because you can start having tens to thousands of followings. And if, and if you're really good at doing the video, I mean, you, people and other agents love to watch you on there and then they can reach a lot more people. So was that the question? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, that's great. Um, so really what you're saying is it, it, there's no real right or wrong. Like I sometimes will put some some personal yeah. stuff and on my business page and vice versa and kind of mix it up a little bit. So I'm not too rigid about that. Yeah. Um, but I think the key again is consistency and trying to have fun with your audience, engage them, educate yeah. them. Um, now another question here, somebody asked, do any of your posts focus on trying to get into the higher price points 
that's been my biggest struggle. I've closed 50 deals a year, all three years I've been an agent, but can't seem to consistently get the high price points. 250, 350,000 is sort of the medium price, uh, or 250 to 350,000 is the higher price points in this person's market. And then the medium price is probably 150,000. So any thoughts around that? So when I do my higher end properties, um, and I know your approach is a little different. You think you should do videos on every single property. And, and like, I haven't even had the confidence to jump in front of the camera and go through my videos with them. But when I do my drone, like my drone videos of my higher end ones, I really utilize those. Um, I, I, I show those off a lot more consistently than my smaller end ones, just to let people know I, I really do work in this price range as well as that price range. You know, if you want to show off that you can, you're doing more of those properties, you could always ask to, to share um, people in your people in your same brokerages or other agents their properties on your pages. So I mean, and they love that too. They want the most exposure for their listings. So you can just like, hey, check out one, two, three streets. It's like a seven hundred thousand dollar home. I love the kitchen. Scroll through the photos because um, you're allowed, oh, and uh, you're definitely allowed to share other agents' listings in our area at least. And um, I mean, that's a great way to have people. They don't really see that right away. Like when they're scrolling, they don't know it's not like they just know that you're that you're talking about some really expensive properties. So maybe when they go to list, they're gonna think, okay, uh, she was really inform informative about this property that I saw went up for sale. So I'm not sure if that helps, but that's something you could try to do. Well, and I'll add I'll add something. I mean, I think the key is is if you can set your standards where you bring luxury marketing to every single listing that you do, and you do that every single yeah. time you are going to, you're going to organically get some of those opportunities because people will know that you're the person that puts a lot of attention to doing a great job. And one of the nice things is if you can use a, a style of video that you can brand yourself, but also showcase your client's property, their friends are going to see it. They're going to be sharing it on their pages. And guess what? That's more mind share and opportunity that you're getting too. So um, I think consistency, I wouldn't be so worried about, oh my God, I need to hit these higher price points. For me, when I started the business, I focused on the mid to lower end of the market. Why? Because I knew it was more recession proof. Number two, I would get more units. I focused more on units. And organically, the opportunities came up on the luxury side. But the truth is my passion, I actually love the properties that turn over quicker. And I love helping just an everyday person sell a property that, you know, for them is like a multi-million dollar property to somebody who's very wealthy. And, you know, helping somebody make a difference with their biggest asset for me is huge. So I never focus so much on, oh my God, I need to be in these higher price points. I focus more on my consistent standards and then knowing who your target demographic is. So for us, we love working with families. Like families are a great one because you get the upsize opportunities and it's just a very gratifying life stage. So any thoughts on that? No, you're exactly right. I mean, I mean... <coughs> Like, I, I really don't focus on higher end or lower end. I just kind of, um, I mean, especially right now, I mean, the first thing that's going to be hit are there's going to be these higher end properties right now. So um, I think everything Jason had just said was perfect. I think that answers the, the question. Great. So um, another like, question for you. Oh, okay. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> people are engaged. This is great. So um, one person asked, so many people post political stuff. I don't. Mm -hmm. How do you deal with them posting on your personal page? Sounds like that's where most of your posts are. So for some of our U.S. clients, I mean, you know, U.S. politics is very polarized, as you know, right? Like the whole left, yeah. right thing, like it's a big thing there. So, you know, people can get pretty passionate about who they support and they uh, certainly don't hold back. So what are your thoughts on that? I'm a neutral, like I, I'm in business. I use my page as business. Like even though it comes off as personal, I, I'm neutral. Like I, I, I don't, you'll never win an argument if you like, there's just, I've seen enough bad Facebook arguments over the tiniest thing go and people are delete you for years just cause they didn't like a way you saw things. So if you could be as neutral as you possibly can and kind of just not get in there personally on, on publicly, you know, if you have, a, a, if you feel some way very strongly about something, maybe you guys can talk about that in person, but I wouldn't start anything on Facebook and politically, I crit, like Canada is definitely not as political as the States. So we don't have, we do have a little bit, but nothing compared to what you guys have. Um, I mean, I would just, you know, think of your page first as your business and what people see of you. So even though you want to say what you really feel, it might not be the best place to show that. 
And um, I always think of that when I'm and what, what I'm posting. I'm very neutral with everything because, you know, you just have one bad apple that shares a post of yours that could go a long way. And um, see a side of you that you didn't really want your business side to be seen that way. So, yeah, it's a slippery slope. And sometimes I go there on my personal page and I shouldn't um, just because I, you know, I have, I'm packed and I have opinions and, and values but at the end of the day I always do it in a very respectful manner and I always try to yeah. you know say look at the end of the day what's amazing about being human beings is that we can disagree but still be friends and still get along you know there's yeah. no reason why we can't be friends you know just because we have different ideas yeah so why don't we talk about some of the other platforms then Georgia so we talked about yes. Facebook so, so I'd love to hear more about your brilliance yeah, so I just wanted to touch on, um, yeah, so the business page, I kind of talked about that for a little bit about the limit there. And um, the Facebook groups, which you guys all kind of know about, because I think you're all part of the mastermind group. Um, so I just want to jump into Instagram and TikTok, and, um, and I love working with them. So I just want to leave you with two Facebook facts before I jump on. Um, this is really interesting. I thought 74% of high income earners use Facebook. So for anyone that's using, that's earning 75,000 or more, this is their preferred social network. And uh, the only one that's actually higher is YouTube, which is uh, 83%. So um, any videos you're really doing on here and you can lap them over to YouTube, you're really hitting the highest percentage of earners that will be watching. So something to think about. And the most interesting thing is worldwide, there are over 105, no, 1.5 billion users, face, active Facebook users, but Canadians are the most active Facebook users in the world. Canadians. Okay. So there are more than 19 million Facebook users in Canada. More than 14 million Canadians check their Facebook news feed every day. So you definitely want to be on there once a day, like once or twice a week. So they know your face is going across there and they know who you are. So Instagram. I love Instagram. It's safe to say the majority of the city that, uh, that you live in is full of buyers and sellers that are using Instagram and your competitors are using Instagram too. Instagram has 58 times more engagement per follower than Facebook, and you generate over four times more interactions on Instagram versus Facebook. So those are some really big numbers. And um, like Facebook brings, okay, so what I wanna say is like, Facebook brings more of a local base for me and a local presence and can for your brand. Uh, whereas Instagram, you kinda, you can help, Okay, so for Instagram, it can help you reach parts of the world that you didn't even know existed. And this is from my experience. Like, it's hard to believe that someone across the world will personally reach out to you and they reach out to me. Um, even though this may lead to, this doesn't lead to any future deal or a future client. It just shows the reach and solidifies the power it can propel you internationally and not just locally. You would be surprised how quickly your audience grows and the helpful advice you were sharing before is now cast all over the world. So I know I'm reading from this, but I'm trying to say like, I mean, Facebook is so local for me. Like I go out and people see me on Facebook, but Instagram is also the same because I have the younger generation that really like are really pumped with that. But you know, you're not going to get the reach like you are. I, I can't like you do with Instagram versus if you did have a really good business page, but um, just want to stress that. Instagram has a very simple and clean platform versus Facebook. Facebook, you can scroll and scroll and you see a lot of junk that really doesn't pique your interest. But on Instagram, you can really fine tune what you see and it's not bugged up with photos uh, about Tiger King, even though I love Tiger King, but I mean, but, like it's not going past your feed every two seconds. So I like to think of Instagram as my portfolio. So it like, it, it's all about myself. Like as you go on my Instagram, you see, everything about me, like, and five, like, like, it's just all there versus Facebook where you gotta go with photos, you gotta go to this, you gotta like go back in time and like, you really gotta search through it to really get to know the person. So people can click on my name and pretty much see what I'm all about. So for me, you can see, I clearly do real estate and I also love renovations and doing before and afters. And I love raccoons and dogs. Like that's kind of my theme. That's what I like. And a lot of people will say, keep your Instagram for your business and very professional. And that works too, but there's no right or there's no right or wrong way of, of being successful with real estate. I mean, um, and the real estate accounts that I really looked up to and I really like to follow are the ones that share more of their personal life, and that's how I wanted to run mine. So I mean, if you really look up to people 
um, you don't really look up to anyone. Once you start actually looking for some people that you kind of want to like your shape your business around you, and you might find that they are just strictly business on there and doing deals. And that's how you want to come off where the ones I like are more personable. They're on there giving honest advice and, and things like that. So one of the main problems is creating useful content and having consistency across all platforms. That's where I see a lot of people give up. Like I see them posting and posting and they really want to start building this, like gearing their Facebook. And then I don't hear from them like for three, four weeks. Then all of a sudden they sold a house and then I don't hear, see that anything they've done in the next two months. Right. So you, like that's where things drop off and that's where you don't see the growing and you might see a little bit of growth and it just topples off and you go, ah, I can't like, I, I'm over it. Right. So a lot of new agents don't post much because they don't have listings and they feel they don't have anything to give. But this is where you can dive into topics that a lot of buyers, that a lot of new buyers have, like what tax benefits are the, are there for the first time home buyers. So that's a perfect post you could do. It's something to do with what you're doing or selling. You're just showing that you're educated and you know, and you want to share that. Like if you're not into renovations, but you love gardening, I would love to know what bulbs that probably should have planted already this year. Or if you have kids, what are some great activities you can do during quarantine? I mean, I mean, if you want to show your family man realtor, I mean, this is a perfect way to correlate that, that exactly what you do. I mean, real estate is always my main focus on Instagram, but I like, I, but I think by showing more of my life, um, you make real estate look more like a lifestyle instead of a job. And it shows that you love what you do and you're very passionate about it. And I think anyone that's really successful, that's what they kind of come off as like, this is, this is what I do. I love what I do. And, um, you're not going to want to hire a real estate agent that hates what they do, <laughs> you know, or, they're sick of their job. So, um, honestly thinking of a really good post is fun and the more you do it, the better you get at it. And it's easier. It is just like anything. Um, I usually interchange all my content I do with Facebook and Instagram, but some posts I only do for each platform. Like I was saying earlier. So Instagram stories, I can be a little bit more silly. Well, Facebook, I always like the shine in my best light for some reason. And you just kind of feel the way you feel out your crowds too. Right. So, I think my, uh, most of my family is on um, my, my Facebook, whereas I probably, like most of my friends are most of my Instagram. So I, I, you know, sometimes your family doesn't want to see what you're doing. That I don't know. I don't know where I'm going with that, but and you really, everyone has different feels for different platforms. Um, so going back to that, um, I, okay. So Instagram stories, I could be a little bit more silly. Yeah, okay. Blah, blah, blah. But speaking of stories, Instagram does, deletes every story after 24 hours. So if you're, I'm just saying, if you're really new to Instagram, you put a story up there, it's gone, but you can check and save your favorite stories you do in your highlights. And that way people can find them very quickly. And you know, you can really fine tune what people see of your stories, right? You might do a bunch, but you, like two of them are what you want people to remember. You store them in there and you can use it for like just future things as well. One of my favorite things to do is to do a story on a new listing. I just recently kind of started doing that and actually, um, other agents in my area, I'll, I'll ask them, Hey, cause I have a little bit bigger following than them. I said, you want me to go through your property on, on stories and I'll, I'll show off their property for them. I mean, my viewers want to see really cool properties. And I mean, like if, it doesn't matter if I'm selling or not, they still want to see it. And the best way for them to see it is if I go through there and I go, Oh my God, you have to see this, like this century house. It's unbelievable. And I'll get people pumped about it too. Like saying I'm going on Tuesday, oh, sorry, I'm going on Tuesday to see this place. So, um, and I get a lot of positive feedback when I do that. And it's just something so simple to do because you're already there. Um, other tips, um, another tip is to always post about your open houses across all platforms. I know we aren't really doing them right now, but this also works for virtual open houses. Um, I, I used to just add them on the MLS. So I used to just log in open house Sunday and have it low on realtor.ca and on the MLS. But now I've really noticed if I do like open house coming on like, say on Monday or Tuesday, this Sunday, and then I have it in my Facebook stories, my Facebook page, my Instagram, my Instagram stories, and I have linked in some other things, but like I pop it out two, three times a week and you should see the traffic that actually shows up at these. And, um, and that is just the greatest way that you can promote a giveaway or promotions. I mean, I don't think you think of any other way that would be get that many eyes on you to do any of those kind of things. So that's another tool just right there that your seller, I mean, when you go to a listing appointment and they love that, like I would love that if I was trying to sell my house and I knew that my house was going to get pumped out that many times a day. Instagram is a gold mine for referrals. I mean, clients, will want to keep up with you and refer your services to their network of friends and family and coworkers. 
Your clients can tag their Instagram friends on your listings and they do it all the time. I put a listing up and I have all these names all the way down. People have tagged them. Like, I don't know who even the person that is that tagged them. But if I really wanted to be eager, I could private message them and say, Hey, I noticed your friend tagged you in a post. Are you working with a real estate agent? Like all day. Like that, that is so easy for lead generation. Um, um, your clients. So yeah. So also referral business between agents is a game changer. I mean, the people I follow on my social media is all across the country. Like, you know, they're one of the first people I think of when I want to set a referral off and I get a ton of referrals when people say, Hey, George, I know you work the, the London area here. You know, you can't always, referral business is, is a huge opportunity. Um, for all the new agents, you can look like a pro without any experience and you can build an entire portfolio that people can look at and think, wow, this agent is really on the ball. I mean, they always know the market updates and are always giving me great advice and they look like they're actively working. I mean, where else can you come off as that way? You can t literally fine tune how you look to hundreds of people when really you're probably at home scrambling, trying to figure out how you're going to get a listing and, and calling out buyers. But, you know, if you're on there educating people like you know what's going on in the market, you know, people are, are like, they know that you're, you're, you're trying and they're, they're going to look to you. So, um, one idea I had the one, actually one idea I just had this week was to start posting testimonials, um, like for us agents that, you know, cause Jason had given us some great advice to call up our past clients, which was great. Like I actually hadn't called up some of these clients in like three, four years. And I, I had a great time getting, to, um, talking and getting to knowing what they're doing. And it just really was asking how they were doing. But that also reminded me, you know, I never grabbed testimonials from like, 50 or 80% of my, no, I'd say like 90% of my last deals. I never go, Hey, could you write me a nice testimonial? And I don't do that. And I should. And, um, this is a great time for me to say, Hey, and then I can post that on all my outlets and people actually love reading testimonials. Like, I don't know. I do. Like I, when someone puts it up, I want to read it and just tell them to go on, on Google and, and give me a good rating and, and give me a good testimonial. Cause you know, you want to look, you want that. Cause it's going to sit in, in these social medias for, forever and that people can quickly access your testimonials that are going to be amazing they really put a lot of faith in those like look how like a lot of businesses strive only on testimonials so make sure you have yourself set up with a bunch and if you have them in your instagram stories right there testimonials they can sit there and read 10 of them in two seconds versus trying to find your website and find your testimonial tab so um that was just thing i thought we could work on while we're kind of going to this thing right now um Da, 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 da. Okay, so another great thing, I'm almost done. <laughs> another great thing about using Instagram for real estate is you can see precisely who likes your posts and you can reach out to them directly for potential leads. So, I, I mean, on average, realtors see 10 times more engagement from, in, from their Instagram posts than Facebook on Instagram, just because that reach is so much further. They're not saying that the, that the interactions are way better. But I mean, on both platforms, you can just quickly send these people a message and people love getting messages saying, Hey, I noticed you like my post. Are you currently in the, in, in, in the, looking into buying a home? And like, they, they, like, it's just, it's just like, you know, when you're, we're starting out, this is a great way to pick up some new leads. So it's like, I'm just, that's what I'm just trying to say. It's a free, it's a free lead source, you know, and you can just say, Hey, you know what? I want to thank you for, for tagging your friend in this, in my listing video. Uh, I'm <laughs> curious, what was it about the home that stood out to you? And then you, all of a sudden you have a great dialogue going with them and you know, it's, it's all free, which is so cool. So it's just a matter of, it's really the time investment that you need to put into social media. It's funny cause I'm telling how to do it and I barely do it enough myself. And I'm thinking, Oh God, I should be doing that. So, um, I'm actually glad I'm doing this. I'm getting a refresher. Um, you know, if, okay, I, so I haven't touched on advertising yet. So I haven't touched on advertising yet. Boosting your ads and promoting listings is the way to go. I mean, I, I really don't do that, but that's one of the things I really want to get into because, you know, Facebook ads are so cheap and, you know, and this is such a strong marketing tool to bring to my listings and branding. So say I want, I'm going against someone else, you know, and I have the stats to how far my Facebook post boost will, will go and they don't, no one else has, has that. I mean, it's infinity on you how many people you can reach for a hundred bucks i mean but like even down to five dollars you can boost these posts on instagram or facebook and you should see the thousands of people that see them um 
So when people share, and so the other thing when you kind of want to go into promoting listings, say you have a really big, big listing that you want to promote, like I say, close to a million dollar one. And if that question earlier was, I want to keep myself in that bracket so people know me, then you want to advertise every day. That's at the top of their, of their, their page that like you are selling this house at that price. I mean, for a very small amount of money, you can come off as a, as like, you know, that's what you kind of sell in real estate. So, so as I'm saying, if you're going to get into adding, you, you got to make sure like it's such a strong marketing and branding tool that you you look good, right? You need a good headshot on there. Um, and I always put mine in the bottom corner of the picture and I have my name and number. I don't make it too confusing, but when some people share my posts, um, because they like the house, I'm being shared with it. So I think I've touched on that earlier, you know, and if you don't like your face, you, you know, if you don't like your face, you better get on it. I'm sorry. I don't know why I wrote it like that, but People want to see you. And like for years, I was never on my signs. I just didn't want to be on my signs. And I finally just recently switched back and you couldn't believe how many people are reaching out now. Like I saw your sign, like driving. I saw your sign here, I saw your sign there. So get back on your real estate signs. Um, and if you, if you, and they don't care what you look like. Real estate is highly competitive and you can't hold back because you don't like the way you look. And if you don't like your photo, then get a professional one done. It goes a long way. Like if you see my signs, you know I did not wake up in the morning and look like that on that sign. And it took me about 50 good shots to get the sign, like the look that I wanted, but it was like two hours uh, and I'm gonna use that photo for the next probably, like as usually real estate agents do till I'm 50. <laughs> this is where my dad's photo is still from. Okay, don't do what she just said. <laughs> do not be that realtor that looks like, you know, you did 20 years ago on your signs. And then when you meet them, they're just like, oh gosh, you're not the person I thought you are. So uh, keep, 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 a, a, <laughs> keep, keep a fresh photo, make sure you are who, you know, you look like who you are. Um, George, a couple questions for you. Do you use LinkedIn? Okay. So I know everyone's freaking out about LinkedIn right now. Honestly, I'm trying to still get my head around it. Whenever I post something, I post it to LinkedIn but I'm really going to start working it a bit more and I can let everyone know what I find. But no, I don't. The st short answer is not really. Like I just post, because I'm already posting, say I, I, I have a new listing. Why not post it on there? Like I do it anyways. It takes literally two seconds to go copy paste and write a description. That is just something I'm kind of working with lately and it gains traction. I'll let you guys know. But right now, no. I, I you, know, you don't want to spread yourself too thin, but I'm saying it's very easily to do that as well, to touch all these bases. Is there another question? Yeah, Georgia, do you use anything like Hootsuite or is this all manual and no pre-planning? Uh, Hootsuite is like a pre-scheduled, you know, you know about Hootsuite? I know, and, and I, I know a lot of people have a lot crazier schedules than me, um, and, and it would be nice, because there's a lot of, like, if you want to spend a lot of money, uh, no, it's not spending, like, spend a little bit of money, and, and some of these marketing companies really give you some really great ideas, and they can set you up really good that you have some really great content that will stretch you out over a couple of weeks. Me personally, I kind of just do it on the fly because it's honestly not that hard to do. Like everyone has a couple little hours um, a week to, you know, it, if you want to get more serious about it, you can think of some posts that week and then you can execute them. You know, like, you know, I'm going to go list this house while I'm there. I'm going to do a quick snippet. And then that's some great content for that day. And, you know, and you can really spread your content out very crazy. You could shoot like three videos on one day and post it three different days. You know, and once you get it, the hardest thing is just getting started and doing it. And then you'll start to enjoy it, actually. <laughs> Even though it's torture at first, you will start to enjoy it. And then if you start finding yourself so busy with work, then you have some extra income that you could actually hire a company to, to, you know, to manage everything. But right now you don't really need to do that. You can just get yourself out there. And once you get more comfortable with it, you're always going to be doing this. I mean, this isn't going away. So it's good to get the basics anyways. And then I know then you can kind of pass it off. And like for Jason, Jason has a team of people that can give him content. He doesn't even, you know, like that's eventually, I'd love to have a team. They just send me their own content and I share it on across everything and add my own twist to it. Well, I mean, like the th truth is I did a lot of content when I was in production. Now that I've been coaching full time for almost the last year now, I haven't been doing as much content, which I know is bad, but I really want to encourage my business partners to start doing that, mm -hmm. putting content. And I'm, you know, uh, I, I love creativity. And so I'm pushing them to do that. And I know some of our agents are running with it more than others, but I, I really believe that there's uh, an opportunity there. Um, can we quickly touch on TikTok? Yeah, I'm just about, I'm going up to TikTok right now. I'm like two seconds done. <laughs> Okay. I know, am I going a long time? I'm sorry. No, no, it's fine. Um, We're just 
I like to try to keep these within an hour, but we're going to go over a little bit today, which okay. is perfect because there's a lot of good value. Da, 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 da. Um, okay, so the amount of people you can reach through social media advertising is limitless compared to traditional advertising methods like newspapers. Um, you want to add, you want, so you, when people go on your ads and they click your ad, you want your page to be memorable. So I just want to stress this before I jump on there. So when people click on your ad, it goes to your profile page and it better be some original and authentic content on there. So they want to follow you. You know, you don't want to be paying for these ads and people going there and they go on there and it's just, there's nothing that they, they see interest or value in. So find your value, put it out there. Now I'm going to jump into, I'm going to, so I'm going to jump a quick chat about TikTok, which is everyone's favorite. I'm no expert on this by any means. Like I honestly recently just started using it and I'm still figuring it out. So by far, what I can see is you need to start TikToking. I mean, if you're actually serious, like about building some crazy following lifestyle, um, you need to get on TikTok. And I'm, I'm just gonna say this because everyone's thinking it. It is not just for teenagers. In fact, 74% of users are over the age of 25, okay? <laughs> so I was surprised when I read that. Do you remember when Facebook was created and the college kids, it was created for college kids, and now it's like, it, it has a, like, it's this bad reputation that it's for old people. So this is going to blow up massively. And, it, and, um, and like the leading age of new users is 25 and up. So it's growing massively with 25 and up year olds where everyone thought before it was little kids, because I did too. So I have only, I honestly only made, so I honestly made my first post a couple weeks ago and I realized the potential of this platform like it, it's amazing. Like, so I was bored one night and I made a video about putting a piece of corn in the microwave and it started popping like popcorn. And I was like, look, this is stupid. And I have no, like not took me two minutes. And I woke up with like 400 views on it. No, 4,000 views on it. I mean, I struggled to get 500 views on my Instagram stories and my stories are gold. Like they're great. And then I have 4,000 views over me putting a piece of corn in the microwave. So then I made a video about changing a soap dispenser and like, I just want to grab right here. I want to look, let's look right now and see how many views I have on it. Cause this is just ridiculous. I have 368,000 views on this. I don't know if you guys can see that. Oh, I don't know. What I'm doing. You can but share your screen. You can put it on your screen, but uh, I know the video you're talking about. <laughs> 360,000. It's like the silliest video too. It's like you like dramatically like changing a soap dispenser yeah. under the sink and having to clear everything out. And then you realize like, oh, I could have just lifted the top of it and filled it and not had to go through all that. It's like, it's actually a really clever, funny video, but I cannot believe you've had that many views. That's insane. I know. It's like, so like, it's the most, I, I can't believe this, the, how much you can reach people with this platform. You know, and if you really want to take some huge strides in your real estate audience, um, and on the one of the biggest up and coming platforms, and it's actually way more fun than any other ones, and it's the easiest to make content for, then you need to start learning this platform. I just want to give you some quick tips how to start. And again, you can use, um, and you can use this again, all the content you make here, you can use it across all your platforms, which is just huge. It's just, it's just the best thing ever. So my best tips for using TikTok is to fully understand it first. I recommend searching a hashtag that you are interested outside of real estate, like gardening, you know, find videos you enjoy and follow about 30 profiles because that's going to start your for you page of things you enjoy versus you're going to go on there and be like, Oh, like this isn't anything what I thought. But once you start looking for things you like, it's going to start populating that. And then you're going to search for the real estate hashtag and you're going to follow your favorite creators from that hashtag. TikTok's algorithm is much more advanced than Instagram's and will curate content that will, you'll actually enjoy on your For You page. So your For You is kind of like your home button for Facebook or Instagram. Um, meaning you get less teenagers dancing to electronic music and you get more of what you actually want. For me, I like watching cooking hacks and real estate tips and I have yet to see anyone really capture the real estate hashtag. I'm serious. There's like, there's, there's like no one doing some great content for real estate. Um, one easy first TikTok is to slide, is to slide in one of your listings and then with some great music. My first listing, I just literally walked around my property and I put some really fun music to it. And I had, I think I had 500 views in a couple hours. Where else can you get that? I mean, 500 views. I mean, again, that's another great way I can expose someone's property that I can talk to them to do in a listing appointment. And it's just another way, another tool I can really use to make real estate fun. Um, 
so I'm going to finish off here. I'm, I'm going to start talking. I'm going to stop talking now. There's so many ways to get out there. I haven't even touched on podcasts, LinkedIn, or YouTube. Um, and one of the amazing thing is, is once you get better at putting yourself out there, everything is intertwined. What people may not love on Facebook, they may love on Instagram. And what people might not love on Instagram, they might love on TikTok. People just really want to hear, hear from you and will find what works for you. But you need to do something. And even if it's just a little bit, because real estate is always about, is real estate's always changing and it's the future. I mean, this is not going anywhere. You just can't like just try at what I'm trying to do here. You need to be doing these things one way or another. And uh, if you really want to be successful in the future. And um, I mean, you could do real estate all different ways, but everyone knows you need to have your presence out there. So, so yeah, it has incredible results. And thank you for your time. <laughs> Well, Georgia, thank you so much. You have shared so much valuable with everybody. And like, there's a million notes that I want to go back and, and take from this, this video. So I'm gonna have to go back and watch it again. Um, I want to open up though, to anybody that has questions. Let's, let's go. Um, any questions that you have, we're happy to answer them. And, and uh, where can people find you on your social um, media? It's like, Oh, okay. Well, Instagram's Tush Real Estate. Um, okay. And Facebook's Georgia Tush. And TikTok, I think it's Tush Real Estate. I try to keep all my names that, like alike all the way along. A LinkedIn, Georgia Tush, you know. Um, and I want to touch on quickly. If you, you know, it's work. It's a lot of workload. You think about posting a lot and make. If you have a partner, you can always like just 50-50 it or or create a group of um, like you do. Like you have the Sims group where everyone can kind of chime in on the workload to keep yourself relevant and consistent. But it's really not that hard, and you really do not need a big big following to get some amazing results. So. Love it. Yeah. Cool. Well, uh, audience, if you have any questions, now's your time. <laughs> Jackie says she's a lucky lady to be aligned with you. You lucky absolutely are. You. <laughs> awesome. Okay, you know, well, thank guys, you, everyone I love the power of the mastermind. This is the point of this is like, let's work together and like, let's bring people that are really doing well in different areas and let's keep growing and, and le learning and pushing each other. Uh, let's take this time to really level up and uh, make things happen. So, Again, Georgia, thank you so much for selflessly giving today. Uh, there's a ton of great value. And everybody, okay. thanks for checking in.